What up fish friends? In today's hardscape tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a high alpine mountain tank using Dragonstone. Dragonstone is actually a really light stone. It's pretty porous in comparison to some other stuff like granite or Siriu stone that are also commonly used in fish tanks. One of the biggest differences though is that Dragonstone has a lot of really sharp protrusions sticking out of it which is what makes it such a cool stone filled with texture but you'll want to protect the bottom of the glass if you have any big chunks in here which we will since it's a mountain tank so I put this foam here it's just some styrofoam that came with uh, a box in the mail it's not specific for aquariums and I make sure that there's a little bit of buffer room along the sides so that you're not going to be looking at the styrofoam when the tank is uh, set up. And then as far as soil goes, I like to use planted aquarium soil. It's this stuff here that's made of clay or volcanic material, little pebbles, and it's easy to pile up towards the back, which is naturally what you're going to want to do if you're building a mountain tank. Another popular choice is uh, garden soil, but I really don't see how you would be able to pile that much garden soil on the back without making a mess. So I just start dumping in the soil here, and then I slant it up towards the back. I got a whole bunch of dragonstone to pick from. There's a few different colors, kind of reddish, brownish, and then bluish hues. I'll probably just pick two colors and kind of layer them. I'll have a front that's red and then a back that's kind of bluish. The easiest way to get started on a project like this is just to pick one really cool chunk of rock and get it in place. So this is going to be like kind of the main mountain in the tank. I'm having a hard time getting it to sit upright. Like I talked about those protrusions, it's kind of hard to balance it, but I do have this sharp part sticking out right on the foam which makes me glad that I have foam underneath. So the best way to balance this is just to grab a little um, brace or anchor stone and then place that in the back and just, just wedge it in there and that's enough to keep this large stone standing upright. Eventually I'm going to fill this back area up with soil so it's not going to just be this little rock holding up this large one. From this point on, I'm just going to start playing with some other rocks and slowly add to this. Um, the first few pieces can kind of be the hardest to get a rhythm going. Um, obviously, I'm having a hard time deciding how to place this one, so I'll try some others. And, um, you know, after a few minutes, I decide, do I need to move on? It's kind of like writer's block. I'm not able to get this area at the moment so I'm gonna try a different part of the tank and Dragonstone's super fun to work with when it comes to creating mountains and peaks all you do is take the jagged ends and make sure that they're sticking upright and so I just go through here and put a bunch of rather slender stones out um, piling a little bit more substrate as I go to support it from the back so that they don't fall backwards and also having substrate uh, is a good way to stick these slender branches in they just jam right into the soil and stay in place so I don't have to bother with gluing each one as I go although it's not a bad idea at the end which I will go over how to do all right, so now that I've got this little range finished here, um, it's time to think about what I'm going to be doing along the front of this tank. And then I want this area here to be like a glacial valley. Um, so I just smooth it out and slant it up towards the back. And it's always a good idea to add more details as you go. I thought that this area could use a few more chunks of stone. Um, getting smaller towards the front so I just laid a few more out and I think that really tied this spot together alright so now that we're done with the front portion of the tank I'd like to add a different mountain range in the back when you're doing a mountain tank it's really important to create a sense of depth um, like this tank just goes on for miles and miles and the way I'm going to do that is pile up some more substrate in the back and then 
create another little mountain range using some bluish stones. So using different hues of Dragonstone is a great way to create uh, different layers, a sense of depth that I was talking about. And you know, if you were to look at a picture of mountains, you'd notice that even though the ones closest to you might not be the biggest hills or rocks, they appear a lot larger. That's just how scale works. So if we want to have some really far off mountains in the distance, the best way to do that would to be use really slender or small ones that'll really help to create a sense of scale in there. So I just go and place all of these little peaks in the back. It's a pretty fun part of the project. It kind of ties everything together. As far as stones go, I'm using some crushed up dragonstone. All I do is I take a towel and I wrap up the dragonstone in there and then I smash it with a hammer. Dragonstone is a really easy stone to break apart. You do want to wear glasses or wrap it in a towel because this stuff will shatter like crazy. And then when you're done smashing it up, you need to wash it. There's a ton of clay inside Dragonstone. It's such a dirty rock, but it is easy to rinse off. Adding real small shards of Dragonstone really helps to kind of complete this range. If you taper them off towards the sides, it'll look like the mountain range is just disappearing in the distance. Then I go through and add a few more details here and there just to tie things together. Alright, now that things look good, it's time to glue some of the pieces together. It's not completely necessary. I think if I were to fill this tank with water right now, these stones would stay in place. The difficult part would be um, when I start adding plants to this tank with tweezers, that's going to agitate the substrate and the rocks are going to shift out of place. And then the other thing is scrubbing algae. You know, at the very least, these rocks are going to need to be brushed off every now and then or siphoned out around and that's going to be really hard to do if they're not secured in place. So as per usual I'd use my paper towel and liquid super glue trick. Just wedge a little bit of paper towel padding in between a contact point between two stones and then douse it down with liquid super glue. It only takes um, you know 10 seconds, 15 seconds for a chemical reaction to occur, paper towel will go rock solid and your items should be secured in place. Go around, you can hit any contact points around the tank that you want just to make it as secure as possible. And then for the final touch for this tank, I decided to cap the front with sand and add some accent stones. My initial thought on accent stones is I'd use some of these pebbles, but they looked really crummy. so. I remembered that when I was smashing up some of this Dragonstone, I had a lot of rubble and that would actually be perfect because it will match these stones exactly. So I went out to that towel that I had been using to prevent shards from smashing into my eyes and I grabbed a bunch of that rubble and just tossed it around in some spots and it really was the perfect finish to this tank. And there you have it, a nice high alpine mountain hardscape. When you look at it, it looks like kind of a complicated setup, but when you start to think about it, it's really not that difficult to pull off. I think that this would be maybe not a good introductory hardscape for people, but for anyone looking to uh, move beyond like the simplest hardscape they've ever done and try something a little more challenging, this would be a great one. Um, looking at it here, all we have is one big piece of Dragonstone, that kind of central mountain right here, and then just a bunch of slender pieces stuck vertically 
anyone can take these stones and just grab them into place and slowly build them up. Just think about scale, the things that I've mentioned, you know, you want to have some of your bigger stones in the front and the smaller ones in the back to help kind of create that that sense that these are big mountains far off in the distance and these are smaller stones that appear really big but they're right in front of our eyes. As far as plants go, I'm not going to be planting this tank in this video because it's a hardscape tutorial, but I would probably really only use uh, little bits of moss here and there, nothing too big, it's only a six and a half gallon and any big plants would quickly distort the sense of scale if you had a huge stem plant towering over your mountain peaks. Um, I've never seen that in real life. In a high alpine system you'd really only see um, mossy, grassy, low growing, um, herbaceous flowers. So I would stick with maybe even just some marimo moss balls, uh, break it up and cram it into some nooks and crannies. Even grass would grow pretty tall in comparison to some of these um, larger rocks and I think that would kind of skew the sense of scale. Alright, thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed today's video. Please drop a comment if you have any questions or if you just enjoyed that. Thanks a lot. Until next time, see ya!